Okay, um, I, on this video I'm going to talk about the future of Mick Foley, Daniel Bryan, Ring of Honor, uh, the WWE World Heavyweight titles, and Monday Night Raw. First of all, obviously, no video of celebrations of Dundee United Football Club. They didn't win the Scottish Cup on Saturday, unfortunately. Uh, it was the team we were facing, St Johnston, that won it. Congratulations to them. It is actually the first uh, ever Scottish Cup win by them in their 103 year history. I think it is 103, 104 year history. I'm not as upset losing to them as I would be other teams anyway. But anyway, back on with the wrestling. And over the last couple of weeks, there has been Ring of Honor and New Japan pro wrestling shows. Now, I was able to find these online. Um, and. I I thought I think it got a half decent copy of the War of the Worlds event, so I will watch that soon in the next couple of days and maybe um, put up what I thought of it, a review of what I thought uh, of the pay per view. I do hope they do come out on DVD uh, because from what I've heard, these are really really good events uh, happening. Of course, um, a week past Saturday it was war. It was Global Wars and the Ted Reeve Arena in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And this past Saturday it was uh, the War of the Worlds uh, in the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. Uh, spoiler alert, because I'll go quickly through the results of these matches. Like I said, uh, hopefully we will come out on DVD, and I will actually. Watch a slightly dodgy copy, but um, I don't have money to unfortunately to actually order these on the use stream. They're available, there are still replays, I believe. Certainly, of War of the Worlds available, I'm not sure about Global Wars, but you can go on Ustream stream uh, at Ring of Honor Wrestling, uh, ROH Wrestling .com, whatever, uh, the Ring of Honor's official uh, website. I'm sure you can get the details there. Um, the dark match, Caprice Coleman defeated Adam Page, who was accompanied by Jimmy Jacobs. To begin War of the Worlds, ACH, Matt Taven and Tommaso Ciampa defeated Alex Kozlov and Rocky Romero of Forever Hooligans and Tatake Watanabe. The Decade, BJ Whitmer and Roderick Strong, accompanied with Adam Page and Jimmy Jacobs, defeated the world-class tag team Gedo and Jado who are actually high up officials in Arrow in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Jay Lethal successfully defended his ROH World Television Championship against Kushida. Bullet Club, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson successfully defended their IWGP Tag Team Championships against the Briscoe Brothers, Jay and Mark. Very quick note on this. Um, check Reby Sky's YouTube channel, R E B Y S K Y, and you'll see a group. Really, it's a short but really brilliant video of the marriage between Amber O'Neill and Doc Gallows, Doc Luke Gallows, formerly Festus in WWE. It's a short, only about two minute video, if that, but it is a really great uh, looking video. Uh, R E B Y S K Y Ruby Sky on YouTube. It's a short but really good video. She was of course there as filming it. Uh, partly as a guest, uh, absolutely great video. Uh, Shizuki Nakamura defeated Kevin Steen. Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated Michael Bennett, who was of course accompanied with his fiance Maria Canellas. Red Dragon, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly accompanied with Tom Lawler who is a MMA fighter who's actually been training them for the past couple of weeks defeated the Young Bucks Nick and Matt Jackson to win the ROH World Tag Team Championships. Adam Cole defeated Jushin Thunder Liger. A career highlight this has to be for Adam Cole to retain his ROH World Championship. I do hope before Jushin Thunder Liger retires, he does win a genuine recognised World Heavyweight Championship. He's been one of the best junior heavyweights, cruiserweight, light heavyweight, whatever you want to call him. Well, basically, just basically one of the best wrestlers over the past 30, about 30 years in the industry. And... I do hope he wins a genuine recognised World Heavyweight Championship before he retires. Uh, but that's got to be a career highlight for Adam Cole. 
uh, to defeat a guy like Jushin Liger to retain the ROH World Championship. Now, the main event of War of the Worlds was made earlier in the night. Uh, I believe it's Cedric Alexander uh, was scheduled to face Kachika Okada, but uh, was attacked during Global Wars uh, and put through a couple of chairs. I don't know whether this is storyline or this is a genuine injury, but either way, he was pronounced injured, wasn't able to face Okada. Um, the Bullet Club, Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, the Young Bucks, and AJ Styles were in the ring to start the show. Uh, Okada came out. What demanded a title match with AJ Styles for the IWGP title uh, because AJ Styles was the guy that defeated Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Michael Elgin came out, said that, well, unbreakable Michael Elgin to give him his proper title, came out, said he was looking forward to facing Okada until a few weeks ago when. Okada lost that title to AJ Styles, and it was really Okada that he wanted to face uh, right at that show, War of the Worlds, and he told Nigel McGuinness, ROH's Ring of Honor's matchmaker, to come out, uh, which he did, spoke to, uh, McGuinness spoke to uh, a New Japan Pro Wrestling official that was ringside, and they made it official, AJ Styles versus Kachika Okada versus Michael Elgin in a three-way match for the IWGP International Wrestling Grand Prix Heavyweight Championship, the World Championship of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And it was actually, to cut long story short, AJ Styles that actually defeated uh, Okada and Michael Elgin to retain the, the title. I really, Again, this is a really good match. I'm hearing really great things about this two match series between ROA, well, unofficially between ROH and New Japan Pro Wrestling. I know New Japan made a couple of matches during these two shows. New, uh, Ring of Honor made a couple of matches between these two shows, but I really look forward to hearing MLW Radio, which you can find at ML Radio, MLW uh, Radio dot com uh, and on iTunes. Uh, the next couple of podcasts, I know they've already been speaking about uh, the previous show, Global Wars, a little bit. I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, the likes of Court Bauer and John Pollock and uh, Lucha Libre legend Conan, if he was actually watching on the Ustream, uh, if if he watched it, and hearing what this whole experience, the two weeks between, uh, well, with ROH and New Japan was like. But again, hearing really good things and hope these do come out on DVD so it can get them uh, in the UK. The aftermath uh, in the aftermath of that show, after the IP per view went off the air, um, apparently uh, Adam Cole uh, entered the ring, uh, hit AJ Styles, Okada and Elgin with the ROH World Championship belt, uh, declared himself best in the world, which is actually the name of their next event, or their next big event. Uh, and after it went off the air, actually, Cole was chased out of the ring by Hiroshi Tanahashi and Yushin Liger. Um, Tanahashi grabbed the microphone, thanked the crowd, promised New Japan would be back, and I really do hope they are. Uh, meanwhile, on the, apparently on the iPay-Per-View broadcast, ROH presented a pre-taped vignette. Now, it's on YouTube, so I'll put the link right at the start of this video, maybe right the way through this video, uh, at least until I, I, end, I end speaking about ROH stuff. But Christopher Daniels is coming back. Uh, it's a... Uh, a vignette in a bar, a uh, bartender puts the, the, a drink down, it may even be, a, a, it looks like, I don't know, I don't know my drinks, I don't drink actually at all, uh, I don't drink alcohol at all, just for my personal choice, nothing, no problems or anything, no problems or anything like that, but it looked like a martini kind of thing, and uh, uh, Christopher Daniels was there in the tuxedo, took the glass, uh, took, the, the, took the glass, turned around and said, Arowitch, I'm coming home, and uh, then he introduced somebody who came in in a in jeans and a t-shirt. You couldn't see the face because you couldn't even see the uh the what it said on the t-shirt. It was something of mania. It was like a Hulk Hogan style writing on the t-shirt, but it had a black square with red censored on it. You couldn't see the guy's face. I'm thinking it's probably Kaz, Frank Kazarian, who's also seemingly left 
Impact Wrestling very recently. So hopefully it will. And Christopher Daniels will. Uh, and that unnamed individual who I again, I think maybe Frankie Kazarian, will be debuting at the Best of the World 2014 on June 22nd, which will be happening at the Tennessee State Fairgrounds Sports Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. And this show will mark the company's debut on live pay-per-view across all major cable and satellite providers. So, are we having a really good time as late? With all these troubles in Impact Wrestling, with people suggesting about they've not signed the new television deal, and some of these top superstars like like Kazarian and Daniels and Styles and Saban and others leaving Impact Wrestling, could ROH generally be going to the top uh, in the fight between all the other the so-called rest of the promotions? Could ROH soon be the number two promotion in the United States? We'll wait and see on that one. Speaking of, the, certainly the, undeniably the top uh, promotion in the world right now, WWE, they have announced a multi-year strategic partnership for WWE's flagship programming, Monday Night Raw and top-rated Friday Night Smackdown with NBC Universal Cable. I don't know whether the financial details are unveiled on this, or whether I'm sure they will have to because they're a publicly traded company. Uh, many suggestions about WWE wanting a lot more money for uh, in this deal for providing the programming, uh, but certainly it says the two pro- programs uh, reach a combined viewership of 10.8 million viewers each week. Obviously, that's just in the United States. I would be interested to see actually how many fans, on average, watch WWE right across the world. Um, but anyway, WWE and NBC have reached a deal. It looked uncertain for a couple of weeks, uh, but they have finally reached the deal. Now, WWE's World Heavyweight Champion Daniel Bryan had surgery this past Thursday. Uh, on WWE.com, this short statement says, After being diagnosed with the nerve issue in his neck by WWE physician Dr. Chris Aman, Brian underwent a procedure known as a cervical foraminotomy to decompress the nerve root. The surgery was performed by world-renowned neurosurgeon and sports medicine expert Dr. Joseph Maroon. WWE.com was not able to get an official timeline for Daniel Bryan's return, but can confirm the WWE World Heavyweight Champion is out of surgery and doing well with strength already returning to his hands. I believe the next WWE pay-per-view is payback. I believe it's something like June the 1st. Obviously, that would be far too soon for Daniel Bryan to return. And following, uh, obviously, the announcement of his surgery, he uh, added the beat and the supposed vicious beatdown that he had suffered uh, at the hands of Kane. The authority announced that they will address the, uh, the state of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship tonight on Monday Night Raw. Now, Monday Night Raw is being pre-taped in the UK, so it's going to be going ahead in just a couple of hours as I record this. It's going to be shown, I believe, still at the regular time, uh, back one o'clock in the morning. Uh, I don't know what the, it's like attending a UK television taping for WWE programming. I know when I was at the Impact Wrestling, we only got audio uh, of backstage segments. We didn't get it on video. We didn't get it on the big uh, either the Titantron equivalent that TNA has. We well, we got a couple of bits that were obviously pre-taped um, when they were in the United States. It was obviously pre-recorded stuff shown to us, but only like two, three things at the most, uh, but all the rest of them we could only barely hear it. So I don't know what it's like attending a WWE television taping uh, in the UK, but obviously this may be the reason they're, you know, they're, not, uh, they're keeping it airing at the same time even in the UK, because uh, they want to put in any pre-taped segments that they have. Uh, but certainly they're going to address that. I'm, 
I don't know. I probably will end up staying up for Monday Night Raw tonight anyway, as I usually do. But I'm not going to be going online later on looking for spoilers, looking for what's happened on this live taping uh, of Monday Night Raw. But I'm sure many people will have, as I'm sure as Raw goes along with modern technology now, if you want to look on Facebook, on Twitter, on various websites of wrestling news websites and so forth, I'm sure you'll be able to look as as the taping goes along uh, and what happens on tonight's Monday Night Raw, but as a, I'm not going to be looking for spoilers um, for tonight's Raw, I'll probably just watch it uh, on its regular time. One of the things coming out of the WWE UK and Europe tour is that WWE on Twitter just yesterday confirmed the expected news that we've that many people have reported over the last couple of weeks in the UK that Bo Dallas will debut on SmackDown this week. He will be uh, debuting, I believe it's being filmed as usual tomorrow uh, on SmackDown. As well as from tomorrow, SmackDown is being taped in London featuring Hulk Hogan, who is actually on an ITV programme called Loose Women. No, it's not what you think, it's a female discussion uh, panel show, uh, they talk about various things, I don't watch obviously, it's, uh, most of it, some of them, uh, a couple of names I won't name because I don't want any legal things, a couple of them are really moaning women, put, to put it very politely, uh, who it's all, you know, it's one of those typical, oh it's all men's fault, so this is men's fault, and War is men's fault, and you know, a couple of the panels still like this, like that. Not all of them, but a couple of them, a couple of times I've watched it before, it's a bit of a, oh, it's all men's fault kind of show. But he was on it today. I actually taped the Hulk Hogan section. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't had the chance to watch it. Um, but I'll watch it later. He's only on for a few minutes, uh, I believe, because I ended up falling asleep, and then when I woke up, I was halfway through the program, and he was gone already, so he won't be on it that long. If you can watch on ITV Player in the UK, uh, I'm sure you could find it. Loose Women, L-O-O-S-E-W-O-M-E-N, Loose Women, uh, on ITV. Now, I want to... Uh, talking about, I end up talking about another legend, and I, I, I don't want these videos to go really to go on too long. Still uh, recovering from a bit of illness, but uh, anyway, talk about another legend. Now, in the past, just before I started recording this video, he did pronounce that he had just reached 950,000 likes on his official Facebook page, and that is Mick Foley. Uh, now, Mick Foley. He tweeted this and he put it on his Facebook page. I've got the the, the snip from his Facebook page. That um, he will be making an important announcement regarding his future tomorrow on Tuesday afternoon. Um, the what he, he tweeted pretty much the same thing, but I'll read what it the, the short bit that it says on his Facebook. Important announcement Tuesday. After giving the matter much thought, I have come to an important decision regarding my future. It actually says Führer, but I'm sure he means future. It says F U R U R E, but anyway, I'm sure it says future. I know not everyone will agree with or support the decision, but I do hope the decision will be respected. I will make the announcement on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, again, that was uh, put on Facebook yesterday. What is his decision? What is his future going to be? He did put on that same Facebook post that he put about reaching 950,000 likes, um, that he will be continuing doing comedy shows and so forth. He might have updated it by now. He might even put the decision. I doubt it, but... Um, perhaps it's that he will not deal with WWE again, that he will not be appearing on any more WWE pre show or post-show panel shows, who knows, I know that he declined a Legends deal a few weeks ago uh, due to the money, part of his problem was with the money from the last video game that he was in, part of that was of course with THQ went out of business owing WWE considerable sum of money, part of which obviously was probably um, some of the money at least that uh, WWE was to pay Mick Foley and other talent. I do hope that whatever the decision 
on his feature that Mick Foley does, and I don't know if you probably won't watch this. I know many people leave comments or talk about people and they expect them to watch it, but um, a busy guy like that, he can't watch every single video that di discusses him on YouTube or whatever. I do hope whatever decision he does reach is a good one, and obviously it's going to be carefully thought through, it's going to be one that he's happy with, and uh, I've been a long time Mick Foley fan. I've never been able to meet him, unfortunately, because I've never been able to actually make the tours that he's done in the UK. As I said, uh, or as I put on one of the videos a while ago, he will be doing a tour in the UK in 2015. Uh, he also commented on Facebook that he's putting it together at the moment. Uh, you know, they're starting to put stuff together for the tour. Uh, dates and times and stuff like that. So it'll be a few months until that's announced. Uh, so hopefully maybe you'll be able to get to that. But uh, certainly whatever decision he makes, I hope he's happy. Like I said, long time Mick Foley fan since he was in WCW. Uh, so good luck to him whatever he decides to do in his future. He will always be welcome in, in, in wrestling, different wrestling conventions and wrestling companies if they want to book him for an appearance or you know wherever he wants to go I'm sure and certainly the wrestling world will always welcome the hardcore legend Mick Foley so I'm sure whatever decision that he makes is the best one for him and his family and what he wants to do in his future. Uh, I don't want to again I don't want to do these videos take these videos too long I keep doing that sometimes uh, and it does take you know, this is some people do that some people do though have to understand is that sometimes these topics these things in discussion you have to spend a few minutes to go through you just can't quickly go through the headlines that's why on like the BBC news or whatever local news channel or channel that you watch and has the news on it, it it's not a five minute program it's normally half an hour 45 minute possibly program talking about the news. They don't just go rush through the headlines or this guy's on this charge in the UK or this guy and that guy's on the UK. That's what I keep meaning to do though, a world news kind of look at video and I keep meaning myself to do that and hopefully maybe by the end of the week I'll start getting something actually um, organised for that and I will get a couple of bits and pieces I want to talk about uh, at a decent length um, to arrange and I'll be able to actually talk about because there's a few discussions I want to talk about um, a couple of bits are going to be weighing on a little bit because of legal issues uh, because of the still ongoing cases um, but I do certainly want to discuss a few things that have happened in the world uh, over the past several months certainly really since the start of 2014 but anyway that is the uh, things that I wanted to discuss today uh, in professional wrestling. Certainly a few topics, wrestling things. Uh, wrestling is an industry, there's always news, there's always things happening, there's always discussions, and there's always opinions about it, which is a great thing, of course. Um, still waiting on a few announcements um, in local wrestling and news that I think could be good, so obviously any updates, any important news, any real things that I will think I have to update people on and uh, or publicise them. I will do so. I'll put them up on this YouTube channel. Try to make people aware of any news stories. Again, uh, one f very qu uh, quick final mention of uh, I'll mention it at uh, this video. End of this video now. Uh, the WWE Hall of Famer Rowdy Roddy Piper is coming to the UK and Ireland this July. Check out Eros Comedy's Facebook page at uh, E-R-O-S-C-O-M-E-D-Y Just Eros Comedy on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Eros Comedy You get all the links there to the tickets, uh, to the information, to the venues and all uh, the stuff, the latest information, news, updates uh, regarding that tour. Really looking forward to it, like I said well, a couple of times now I booked my tickets for the Glasgow show, VIP tickets, all VIP uh, meet and greets are going to happen before the shows, uh, so can't wait, look forward to it, it'll be a really good time uh, in July in Glasgow at the garage to see Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, so looking forward to that and any, more, any news, updates or information uh, regarding major wrestling stories, I will put them up on my YouTube channel.